morning and welcome to our worship this morning. We'll be following the order of service on page 38 in the front of the red hymnal. Our opening hymn, 250, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. By trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. 
For without your help, we are unable to please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament reading is recorded in Numbers chapter 11. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me seventy of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting that they may stand there with you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together seventy of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took some of the power of the Spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. When the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp, they were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Our psalm for today is Psalm 51b on page 87 in the front of the hymn, page 87.
chapter 4. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Here ends the epistle reading. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Hallelujah. someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us do not stop him Jesus said for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me For whoever is not against us is for us truly I tell you anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose his reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon hymn is number 421. All depends on our possessing God's abundant grace.
someone takes our words out of context, presses their own interpretation. People can make your words say things you never intended them to say. And it's no different with God's word. People have succeeded in making the Bible say almost anything they want. I think of People who wanted to make a religion of roller skates, they took Jesus' words to Judas, what thou must do, do quickly, literally. Hey. Taking the Bible out of its context is one of the dangers of playing Bible magic. Maybe you've played Bible magic where beginning of the day you open your Bible and you point and that's what you're going to live today but then you have to take that Bible verse perhaps out of its context to get it to mean anything at all for your life we need to read every portion of scripture in its context why do those scriptures say what they do and this text is no different. At the beginning of chapter 9, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on top of the Mount of Transfiguration. And there they saw Jesus suddenly transfigured before their eyes. They saw Moses and Elijah standing on each side of Jesus. When they came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus saw man and his son. His son was demon-possessed. Jesus drove the demon out of the young boy's body. With such a powerful Savior, such a powerful and caring master, the disciples were rather proud to be connected with him. There was the temptation to pride and jealousy. Traveling down the road after the demon was cast out of the little boy, they argued about which of them was the greatest in the kingdom of God. Then keep them all of this in its context. John announced to Jesus, 
Teacher, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. These are the circumstances that prompt Jesus to speak the words here in our text. Jesus speaks of the well-seasoned disciple. He speaks of one who encourages the weak disciple who causes no one to stumble, a disciple who is filled with the Word of God. Taking our cue from the end of our text where Jesus says, everyone will be salted with fire, we speak this morning of the well-seasoned disciple. Not one who is over-seasoned, but one who is well-seasoned, well-balanced, one who is pleasing to the Master. John was no doubt looking for a pat on the back when he announced that he had forbidden the man to heal in Jesus' name. He got no pat on the back. Instead, the Lord told him, do not stop him. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. Jesus' command senses that the disciples were to stop their negative attitude toward this man. The man's use of Jesus' name would bring honor to Jesus. That's what was important. And we know nothing about this man. But he was on the right side of the fence. That's what was important. He was a friend of Jesus even if they weren't his personal friend. Jesus says, for who is not against us is for us. This man did not have the same credentials or the same associations as the disciples, but he was for Jesus. He should not be treated as an enemy. Such people should not be treated as enemies. Rather, we should rejoice in their success and not hinder their activities. Jesus goes on to say, I tell you the truth, anyone who gives a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. Faith in the heart is going to show itself by acts of kindness, by good works. The simplest kindness in Jesus' name will be rewarded. A cup of cold water given to someone in Jesus' name because we are believers, because we love the Lord. The simplest kindness that we show to someone else will certainly be remembered. We live in an age of false ecumenism in which every effort is made to bring all churches together no matter what they believe or teach. Just the idea that it's church, their church, we're all church together. No, that's a false ecumenism. The idea is to bring all churches together whether or not they are in contradiction to many of those scriptures that we hold so dear and familiar to ourselves. We do not have the prerogative of compromising clear teachings of scripture. If the Bible says it, that's what we must believe and teach. When the eternal consequences are considered, the goal of maintaining our own faith and encouraging faith in others is greater than any other goal in life. This particular man who healed in Jesus' name did not need to be treated like an enemy. He obviously was for Jesus. Keep in mind, James and John were called the sons of thunder. They had a hot top that could blow off at any moment. And John, seeing this man heal in Jesus' name without his credentials, made John forbid the man to do any more healing in Jesus' name. The question is, how will our Lord be glorified? Speak up humbly for the truth as necessary. We may radically disagree and we may need to show that, but 
we must be guided by a love for Jesus and the souls for whom Jesus died. That's the paramount issue when we deal with other people. How can we draw them closer to Jesus? By a, a negative spirit toward them or encouraging them in their faith and confession of Jesus? Show a lot of charity. But don't sell out the Savior. We can't do that. It's the Savior in his saving truth. Encourage weak faith when it is evident. And ask yourself, am I dealing with a false prophet or someone who has been deceived? Jesus emphasizes the importance of encouraging faith so that he warns, and if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. This should make every Christian sit up and take notice. The phrase little ones is not limited to little children, but those who have just a, a beginning faith, a simple faith. They're little in faith. Be on guard to encourage faith and not misdirect or kill it. A large millstone is the type that it took a donkey to pull around in a circle. Imagine how effective that would be as a necklace and then thrown into a swimming pool. That's what Jesus says. It would be better for him if he's destroyed a little one's faith and thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. Jesus holds up personal faith in him as the, of the highest importance. That if we find anything that would hinder our own faith, we should perform surgery on ourselves. Can you imagine that? To perform surgery on ourselves to get rid of the infection lest our faith die and we be lost in hell. Jesus says if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worms that eat them do not die, and the fire is not quenched. Jesus means exactly what he says here. If any part of our body would endanger our life, our eternal life, get rid of it, cut it off. In ancient church history, we often marveled about the man who was so concerned that he castrated himself rather than lose his eternal life. Jesus means exactly what he says here. If any part of our body would endanger our life, eternal life, remove it. Anything that leads us away from God needs to be dealt with. It may be necessary to turn off the TV, throw away that magazine, Get off the internet. Break off a friendship or an association. It may even require changing jobs if you realize that what you are doing is interfering with your spiritual life. Get rid of it. Cut it out. It may require changing a personal habit that is leading one away from faith in Jesus Christ. If it's out there and it's doing you damage, Cut yourself off from it. If all this seems too radical, consider the alternative. It is better to enter heaven maimed than to be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Hell is a fire that burns forever, which cannot be quenched. 
endless torment is also pictured by worms or maggots eating on the corpse. They never die and the corpse is never consumed. They feast on rotting flesh but without consuming the body and putting it out of its misery. For us Gentiles who are far removed from the day-to-day -day experience of the Old Testament Christian church, Jesus words, everyone will be salted with fire, are hard words to understand. Part refers to being on the line for our faith. But also in the Old Testament church, the Lord had commanded in the ceremonial law, season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave the salt of the covenant of your God out of your grain offerings. Add salt to all your offerings. That's from Leviticus chapter 2. To Jesus' original hearers, these words would have been understood right away. The disciple's life is to be a life offered to God as a sacrifice, a consciousness of eternity. Live your life as a sacrifice to God to be with him for all eternity. Have salt in yourselves, Jesus says, and be at peace with each other. Salt is widely used as a preservative even today. Pickle brine is just one sample. <clears throat> Having salt in ourselves is referring to the saving power of God's word. Have God's word in you, preserving you for eternity. When we know the word, truly know the word, then we will be filled with zeal for souls, a humble concern that will not lead to persecutions or inquisitions, but to be at peace with each other. When we are filled with the salt of the gospel, we will lay aside questions of who is the greatest and will simply do the will of the well-seasoned disciple is well-salted with the Word of God. From his love of the Word, the well-seasoned disciple seeks to always encourage the weak and guard that no one stumbles. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding to our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and join in confessing faith is in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we are filled with awe and wonder as we consider your marvelous works. Your goodness has blessed us with refreshing sleep, and your kindness awakens us to the miracle of life. You have put our conscience at ease when we recall that all our sins are forgiven for the sake of your Son, Jesus. Such grace is too wonderful for us to understand. We are overcome with praise and adoration for your most holy name. It saddens us that in the midst of your gracious blessings, we should ever transgress your holy will. In spite of your continual care and concern, we know that we have sinned. We have envied those who seem to have a greater measure of your Holy Spirit. We have misguided, misjudged the Christianity of some who are not members of our group. We have offended little children with thoughtless remarks and undisciplined living. 
We have often failed to show by our life just what a Christian ought to be. For these and all our offenses against your holy will and against others, forgive us, Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us that we may more accurately reflect your glory in your sin-filled world. Help us to exert a Christian influence in the affairs of state and church. Help us to bring your strength of healing to the sick, your hope to the discouraged, and your presence to the lonely. Hear our prayer, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we join to pray. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our worship with hymn 446, I am trusting you, O Jesus. 446. Comfort us in all temptation. Bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. (laughs) Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
This is the last Sunday to order the Wisconsin Synod 175th Anniversary Book. There's a sign-up sheet at the guest register. Attached to your worship sheet is a list of coming events. I'd like to draw your attention especially to uh, Sunday, November 3rd. We'll be celebrating Reformation Festival that Sunday. Pastor Bill Russell, retired from uh, Grace Hot Springs, will be our guest preacher that day. Uh, there will be a potluck following the service, and uh, then we'll uh, watch the Luther movie from 2003. Uh, we're doing the movie here in lieu of uh, having the movie and our cookout in our place. It's so dry. It would be a concern about people parking in the grass, and uh, we can't have a campfire because of the danger of fire. So we decided we'd simply uh, have a movie here at the church following the Reformation event. The movie Luther, uh, Joseph Fiennes is the star of that movie, uh, 2003. Got the wrong disc here. Okay. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? There is a new uh, Forward in Christ in tape. Okay. 